Look, God told me to meet him at a runway with no parachute, with no baggage, leave the negativity behind. Ever since, I've been taken off, and I never looked back. I'm your host, Alex E. Edwards, and this is the Gem Drop Podcast. All right, all right. Welcome to Gem Drop. Look, before I drop any gems or I guess drop any gems, I need you to subscribe. You have to subscribe. If you want gems, subscribe. Look, my name is Alex E. Edwards, and I'm your host. Um, and today we have my man, Matt. Now, Matt made $200,000 by working for free. How did you do that? Well, took a long time. Matter of fact. Who are you, Matt? Let's bring it back. That's a good. That's Let's a good question. Back. That's Who a good question. You? My name is Matt Mulligan, mm -hmm. and I own Hawk Visuals. So we're a digital media company specializing mostly uh, in video production. And I'm also uh, a homeowner, which we'll talk about later. I got some tips from you on buying that house. Uh, but my, my primary business is Hawk Visuals. So why did you jump into production? It's a good question. I have no business being in this business. Yeah. Um, I went to school to be an architect, and I thought that would be my dream. Hmm, that's Skyscrapers and houses with all my huh. designs in it. And How much did you pay uh, to go to school for <sighs> architecture? Should I tell you this on air or yeah, off air? Like a lot. Six <laughs> figures for sure. Still paying it off. <laughs> I think, like, honestly, like $150,000 a student loan debt. All right. So yeah. just walk me through this. I'm in school. want to be an architect. I'm looking at buildings. Ooh, I want to build that. Right? Uh, you get out of school, do you get a job? I had a job even in college. So the good thing with Wentworth mm -hmm. is they give you co-ops. Uh -huh. So I had a co-op, basically a job from junior year until after I graduated. Okay. So I knew out of college, guaranteed a job because I had the job previous to that, right? Um, and I worked, it was all residential work. So we we're doing primarily 55 and over houses. And it was like, it was cool and fun, but it was just, I think the monotony of drafting all day just really got to me and I wasn't even making that much money either. So I was like, oh, this is such a frustrating thing. I went to school to do this and now I got all the student loan debt. And I'm like, this is just not what I wanted. But at that time, uh, drone photography was a big thing. So okay. got a drone, flew it around, practiced capturing photos of the houses that we were designing. And the company is like, huh, maybe you can do this on a more regular basis. So it was all for free, part of my job, yeah. capturing photos for them. Um, did that for like a year. Then I went off to do some side work and built that whole entire thing. And after three years of being an architect, I quit to, to do it full time. That's like the shortened version of that. Wow. Wow. Yep. All right. Yep. So, so anyone that owns an arch, um, a architectural company, yep. right? Don't allow your employees to fly drones because you'll lose them. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. My boss knew because I was <laughs> I was doing work before work, after work, during lunch. Yeah. I was answering emails, doing phone calls and all that. And uh, I remember my boss took me into his office and said, like, Matt, listen, like, I know something's going on. I was I thought I was good. Like, I'm all right. I'm like doing this. I'm doing my full time job like I'm good. But it clearly was affecting my work. And so he said, like, you either have to quit or you have to quit the Hawk visuals thing and and do this. And I'm like, all right, give me a day. Went home, talked to my wife. I knew in my head I was going to quit anyways, but I wanted to get her her blessing first. She said, whatever you want to do, do it. So I said, all right, I'm going to quit. Next day, I said, all right, two weeks notice, I'm going to do Hawk Visuals full time. And that was it. Okay. and so, Huge risk, but I did it. Okay. So you 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 did you meet your wife? Because your wife's an architect. Yeah. Did met you college. meet your wife? Oh, in college. Yeah. Previous to even the, the company. This is okay. before the company. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Got you. So your wife was is, is a supportive person. Ride or die, for sure. Yeah, wow. we lived with my grandparents, lived with my parents because like times were tough, and I quit my job to have you know a dream to pursue my company. She didn't say, "Why are you doing that?" or "No, you can't do that." None of that. She was like, "How can I help? How can we do this?" So, so all right, you you leave this career yep. that you thought you was going to be in for the next 30, 40 years. Um, you made that decision in twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I had thought about it before that, but like I had to how, make that decision. How long did day. you go to college? It was a four-year four year program, master's year. Yeah, so four-year four program. Yep. And then you made a decision in 24 hours to quit what you 
worked hard for for four yeah. years. I think I think looking back, it was a decision that took months because I was thinking about it. But like well, it I acted, three years. I acted quick to be like, all right, like this is gonna be it. Got you. Yeah. Got you. And also just just so, so I I also had a small client base before I did that because I was you. doing work and I was getting a little bit of work and it wasn't a ton of money, but mm-hmm. I knew if I could dedicate forty hours or even eighty hours to just that, I could get the clients no problem. So I didn't just jump off an edge with no with no well, support. I I did enough, but I had some client base. So it, it sounded like to me. This is what it sounded like to me. What does it sound I feel like? like God was like, look, I want you to meet me somewhere. You said where? And you and he said, look, when you come, leave your parachute at home. Leave all your worries at home. And he, you end up on this street, on a very long street. And he said, hey, I'm on, I'm around the corner. And this plane arrived, and you was actually on a runway. Mm-hmm. And you quit your job, and you've been taking off ever since. That was that's what, it's, that's that what was, it sounded like to beautiful. me. That was beautiful. That's what it no sounded like to me. No one's ever said it like that. That was beautiful. You know, that's yeah. what it sounded like to me. You just took <laughs> yeah. off, right? Yeah. You now, Look, no parachute. It is what it is. I'm moving in with these people. I'm going to save money. And guess what? I'm gone. See 100%. you later. 100%. Right? And you never turned around. And I think what made it easier for me... And I think I'm risk averse anyways. Like I like taking risk. Well, smart, calculated risks. Yeah. But the fact that my friend's family and my, at the time, girlfriend, now wife, was like, you can do that. I'm like, yeah. all right, that's all I need. Like, I got her. Family, friends, like, you're good to go. I'm confident enough that I can make a go at it. And so it was kind of an easy way to get into it. Okay. But that, but that, I like that whole runway thing. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one ever said that before. So, 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 all right. So when you start a business right yeah. a production company what's the first things you need to buy it was the first five things uh yeah so you need a computer that's good enough to edit what kind of computer i was lucky that i had a macbook from college that they gave us because we were doing a lot of photoshop design work in college so i used that computer which was great but if not like you can use a pretty simple laptop they gave it to you you, like, you, let's you for, mean you you pay for it yeah, part of your your yeah. your um i figured that tuition, i just wanted to but, make sure you understood that you paid for it yeah but i paid ahead. for yeah thanks for the reminder all right no problem yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> but I had that laptop, mm-hmm. so I used that. Um, I bought not a super great camera. It was like $400 worth of... I had a camera. I had a lens that came on that camera. And then I bought um, a mic. That's really all I needed to start. And then I had a tripod, and then I had like the steady rig thing. Yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah. Like you've seen it with our, with our videos yeah, that we yep. do. So laptop with the computer programs, which costs maybe 20 bucks a month. Something like that. Mm-hmm. So those are the two expenses: the camera with the lens, mm-hmm. uh, the mic, and then a tripod and stabilizer. So that's that all you it. need. And under so- under probably a thousand dollars worth of camera gear, and the laptop was two thousand dollars. But I already paid for it, so that was to me just <laughs> I already paid for it. wasn't included in my cost, but under a thousand dollars worth of gear. Okay, and then yep. so what? Um, so how much? How much did you actually? Um, need to start the business how much did all of this come up to as far as like the cost of it yeah the equipment thousand dollars the, 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 the drone again i had some things that i was lucky my grandfather had a drone that he let me borrow so okay. i was using that for a bit i bought my own drone after that uh but the laptop and the drone to me were either already paid for or they were kind of oh, like loans sense. almost kind of gotcha. thing yeah and all the camera gear i bought was about a thousand dollars so not a lot because to me it didn't really matter the quality of the camera gear just yet. I had to practice to make sure I was even good at yeah. doing the work and then I could upgrade over time. Got you. And so buying this equipment, you want to someone out here want to start their own production company. Yep. Where are they buying this equipment? Where's the best place to get a, a good deal and know that you you know what to buy? What's a comp do you go to like a is there a, a Amazon just for uh, production company. Yeah, I mean, there's B and H, which is a huge company. They're based out of New York, but you can buy it all online. Uh, I bought most of my gear on B and H and Amazon. I actually, before I even did that, I had friends who were videographers, so they would tell me, "Hey, I'd recommend this camera and this lens and this and this." And I watched YouTube videos, so I did research before mm-hmm. even buying the gear. But as far as buying it, it's pretty easy to buy. There's a local shop uh, in the South Shore called uh, Hunts Video and Photo. If Hunt's you go video. there and you say, "Hey, I'm thinking of doing video." What town? Hanover. Hanover. There's one, I think, in Bellarica, too, but the one near my office. And we're is talking in about Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay. Because yeah. this Massachusetts. podcast once this goes all worldwide. Over the world, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There might be one in Dubai if there's ever a Dubai podcast. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dubai, holla at me. Drop the bag. I'm there. No matter. I want a red Lambo Ooh. and a white Lambo. I'm not going to drive both of them at the same so time. How would you do that? 
I have a wife. Drive. I have a oh. wife. See? Which one is she going to drive, though? Is she the red or the white? She could get I the white. She's gotta, oh, really? Yeah. Um, I think I, it should I, be red. I love red, but I love white cars. But, you True. know, <laughs> yeah. All my vehicles are white. Yeah. True. It is true. Yep. So, so, um, I, you, the reason why I love this podcast, right? It's you see how you just drop the gems. This is where you go. This is what you buy. Yep. So, if someone's watching this podcast, they actually know what to do. You could start the next Matt Mulligan, like right now. Oh, hundred percent. And, and you just gave them the gems. This is what you do. This is yeah. where you go. And this is what you buy. Well, it's, it's right? important to have someone, even if it's if it's YouTube videos, which I watch so many different yeah. YouTube videos. Even I'm sure I don't know about you, like when you got into real estate, did you have people that you could look up to, or no. were you like no, no, no not even no, a little bit? No. So look up to, look up to. I like had, as an example, of, I want to be like this person. Oh, or I like oh, the like, style. oh, do you motivation, have, inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought oh, you yeah. meant like, oh, I'm gonna sit and teach you. Everything. No, 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 okay, no, gotcha. no, no, no. But you had people like that. Oh, though, of right? course. Yeah. So of like, course. I think in any business, you should have that inspiration yeah. for someone that you kind of look up to a little bit and maybe get info from them. And that helps a lot. Definitely yeah. helps a lot. Got you. So, all right, fast forward. Who was your first hire? And when did you know you was ready to hire a person? My first hire? Yeah. So my first hire, so you know you know Ryan, right? right. So um, it was probably about a year, and I, a year in, okay. that I was like, I was getting stressed because I was working a lot and, I wanted someone that could kind of help me on a part-time basis. So I found a guy on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I was part of a drone group. Mm-hmm. And uh, we posted videos. And we talked about drones and, and all this. And I found this guy, Brandon, who was Ryan's brother, to help me part-time. He was doing video for, I think, Dean College at that time. So he had way more experience than I did. And I said, hey, listen, like, would you entertain coming on part-time to just help with editing, shooting? I'm getting a lot of work, and I just I can't physically do this myself. And he said, yeah, 100%, we'll do it on the side. And um, we really, really got along. And he's still friends with me now, and I hired his brother full-time now. But it was like a year of just part-time stuff. He'd come in after work. He'd come in on weekends. He'd edit from home. Um, So it it helped a lot. Wow. Helped a lot. I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it myself. I was just getting super stressed out, and I had clients that weren't getting so, videos on time. And I'm like, I can't. I can't do this. How do you get clients? Like I, again, I just. I just watch your podcast. I got yep. my equipment. I'm ready to jump off the cliff because Matt Mulligan told me to. <laughs> Matt Mulligan said, "Go to the runway. Someone's going to pick you like, up. Yeah. <laughs> Quit your job. Go to the runway. Someone's going to pick you up." Now what? Are you talking? So you're talking about like not you now. got your equipment. You got, yeah. equipment. You got yeah. your equipment. How did you start? How did you get your clientele? Yeah. So how did you grow your clientele? Sure. So it's going to kind of sound obvious, but like I door knocked all the time. I went to local business owners, like not oh. some, some physically, but also I'd find an email. I'd say, hey, listen, this is my backstory. I'm looking to do I, this at the time I was doing I was doing free work too because yeah. I needed to build up my portfolio. So I knew nice. if I wanted to get. A business, right? To do a highlight, I had to find a business. This is 2016, 17 at that time. When when you was doing free work, damn, that was I. I was you're you're too late now. I I was not on the runway. Just when this podcast (laughs) drops, your price is gonna go up a little bit higher because now I'm a sought after person. So hey, (laughs) yeah, I believe you. That's how. If anyone believes you, that works. I believe you. True, I get that. And and I, I, I bet once your price go up, everyone that work with you, they they gonna get a raise, huh? Yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, are you just saying yeah. that because the two people are yeah, here I recording got them. this? I yeah. Got them. All right. Yeah. You guys heard that. You didn't hear it from me though. <laughs> so, so you do. So something. So yeah. Dream drop. You went to businesses and said, "Look, let me do something for you. I'm going to show for, you what I got free. for free. Hundred percent free. I'm going to show you what I got. Yep. Look, I'm going to edit it up. And of course, yeah. Like, of course, there's no risk. There's no risk. There's no risk for them. No risk. And yeah. I never seen my business in this light. Yep. So yes. Yeah. So how many businesses did you do? I probably did 10, give or take, 10 to 12. A lot of free stuff. Wow. I, I still had paying clients that were doing some things, but I knew, like, again, if I wanted a restaurant or I wanted a business or I wanted uh, a developer, I didn't have that to even show them I could do this. So this I'm like, all right, sense. I'm thinking past them. If I want to get after other clients, I have to physically do the work now to show that client, here's what I can do. So you did... 
So let me get straight. So you did that was smart. So you wrote yeah. down different um, industries yep. and said, "Look, I need free videos from this industry yep. so I can actually put it yep. on my resume." Yep. Wow. Because yep. again, if 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 I go to you and I say I want to do some video Real for estate. you, what do you got? It, Nothing. All right, next. Yeah. Like they're not gonna. They might trust you and like you, you can schmooze them and talk to them enough to yeah. get them to to do it, but. Like I'm the work. I'm the worst person. I'm like I'm a cancer. I'm sensitive, emotional, right? Believe me, you're <laughs> right. I'm on fun to work with. Yeah, How about that? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know y'all be cussing me out, but but check this. So I had to protect myself and put certain people in front of me. So when I hire, when when uh, people join my brokerage, yeah, um, they don't talk to me first, right? Because my heart's like everybody and their mama would probably be at my brokerage. Right, so I had to put people in front of me, so you don't get straight to me and get hired. But now you're going through mm. someone to protect the company and protect me and protect my weakness, which in, I'm emotional and sensitive. But how right? do you make sure that person is doing right by you, though? That must the, take time to trust. Oh the yeah, person, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Oh, hands down. So hands what do you down. look for in that person? Uh, first, has to be a woman. Yeah. Uh, my my business plan is women. Okay. Um, I think women women have a strong worth ethic. Men do too, um, but. Let's look at the numbers, right? I'm in real estate. Women are whooping a single women are whooping single men's butt in in this industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think women women will, as long as you appreciate them, they want to make the company better, right? Men would want your spot. They take your spot and realize I don't really want this spot. Why did I want mm -hmm. this spot again? Oh yeah, because someone else was in it. Yeah, right. And not all men. I don't want to sound. This is I'm. Well, you're from, from, experience, from, yeah, your experience. from experience, yeah, which is it's fair, right? Yeah. From yeah. experience, and I just feel like when you put a woman in position, um, not put a woman in position, when a woman um, agrees to work with me or, or work with any company, I just feel it, it brings a different side of business, yeah. right? When me and my guys get together, and I, I trust me, I I've been in. In the early 20s, right? I've been in part of conversations like, yo, I think I should cheat. And a guy would be like, hell yeah, you should, right? And I'm just throwing it out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. A woman probably like, I don't think, why would you want to do that? That's being disloyal. Yeah, it's more logic like, than more just logic. like it's immediately like, say, like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And then early 20s, we immature, like, well, I'm not going to ask her again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather the person that give me back than because yeah. we're immature. So imagine yeah. that in business, right? Yeah. I'm trying to close a huge deal, and I have men and women to tell me on both sides. One, when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive, right? Yeah. Hey, let's think about this, right? Let's not act emotional. Let's kind of think this through. Let's mm. ask more questions, right? So I've been in a situation where I'm like, or some of my agents been in a situation where, oh, I feel like this agent is ripping me off, right? But guess what? The agent was just busy because mm. I, I could have called him and said, look, you're ripping me off. I need like we having an argument, but they was just busy. Yeah. But if they you were, just had thought about it more, which you exactly, do. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so you so that's why it, I yeah. put people in front of me. So it's it's more it's more thinkers. Yeah. Right. Because see it from a different because when you I never seen someone playing in the NBA on the floor and seeing the entire floor as a coach as well. Sometimes you need that coach to sit back and look at the floor and look at the game. And that's it. So I just need yeah. some people to just look at the game while I'm in the game. Yeah, and you, and you need it. to trust your players. Which, you got to you know, trust your coach. Yeah. yeah. Gotta and, trust and the other way around, Got to trust your coach, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so um, I forgot why we got on this. I, I can't lie to you. Either. We were talking about... <laughs> uh, oh, we are talking about, like, so hiring people, yeah. right? The first right. hire... Yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> We're back. Ooh, We're was, back. That was deep for me. I'm like, yo. <laughs> that was good. Was yeah, good, yeah. Good yeah. Gem drop right so, there. so, yeah. Great gem drop. <laughs> yeah. Um, hire women. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Curtis is like, damn, I'm about to get fired. But anyways. <laughs> He's good. He's good. <laughs> Julie's good, too. I got, we got, we got good people. No, Julie's good people really here. good. We just went on. It's the best one. <laughs> yeah. Curtis, would, Curtis would, is all right. Curtis is all right. Yeah, he's all right. He's all right. Um, his candles are amazing, though. You know, so. Curtis does make amazing <laughs> candles. Um, but so let's talk about you working for free, and then closing. Is this is your biggest contract by far, or yes, yeah. So working, working for free, yep, and closing 
a uh, um your biggest contract. Yep. Talk to me. Walk me through this. So I want to so I'll finish up the point of the free work thing. So I think it's important okay. to know kind of my mindset on that. So after I started getting more clients that were free that I could use to get real clients, and I was getting those clients, so I was like, all right, perfect, getting clients, it's fun, it's great. But I noticed that like I was spending so much time talking to people and like getting them contracts and getting back and forth and this and this. And like, it was, it was good, but I felt like I could be a little smarter about who I went after. So what I did was I went after chambers of commerce so I could get after Who's that? the cha- chamber of commerce. Yep. Every town or place has a chamber mm-hmm. of commerce that if you're a business, you pay to be a part of the chamber and now mm-hmm. you have access to all those business owners, events, so on and so forth. Okay. Not that expensive. It's usually a couple hundred bucks, whatever it was. Okay. So at the time I was in Plymouth and I approached the Chamber of Commerce mm-hmm. saying, hey, if I do some free videos for you, oh, Chamber, Chamber of, of Commerce, Commerce in Plymouth, in Plymouth okay. doing events and highlighting things, mm-hmm. one, can you give me a free membership? Mm-hmm. And two, if I do a good job for you, can you push me and my work to all of your couple hundred businesses that are part of Plymouth? Mm-hmm. They said, yeah, 100%. Got in good with them, did free events. Uh, they saw my videos, meeting the business owners, and they're like, oh, this guy is great. It's awesome. It's cool. And the Chamber of Commerce was sending email blasts to every single person in their realm saying, Matt Mulligan, Hawk Visuals, they do this, this, and this. So now I'm like, this just makes way more sense. If I had to individually go after 200 owners of a business and say, this is what I do, this is what I do, it's going to take me weeks. And I'm wasting exactly my time right. doing that. So if I go after one person, one organization that filters down from there, it's like a light bulb went off in my head. I'm like, this is the way that I should do all of my business. The, the funny thing you say that, right? So, say it's 50 units in a, in a condo complex. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm taking you to my world. Yeah. We, no, we did the I, same I thing. The, yeah. We did the same thing. Yep. It's 50 units in a condo complex. 50. I could go door to door or I could just go to the trustee. It saves time. <laughs> it's like, it's a no brainer once you think about that. And I did it. Yeah. And I did it. Yeah. And I swear this particular trustee. I owe her 50% of Thumbprint Realty. Like, really? Yeah. I, it, but when you immediately approached this person, was it like did, a good relationship and it made yeah. sense? And, and yeah. she, honestly, she gave me the hardest transactions. Hmm. She still gave me the hardest transactions. But it made you a probably better exactly. broker, too. Right? So, yeah. correct. I, yeah. And so she was like, whoa, that was hard. And you did it? Yep. I'm giving you another hard one. <laughs> yeah. Another hard one. A little test here. Matter of fact, Sell this land for over a million. All right. And it, I think this relationship been probably almost 10 years. Still going on now. Still yeah. going on till this day. It's amazing. amazing. So it so it it's I like how you but think it. But it makes sense, right? Even yeah, like well, with you. So if I were to if you have what 40 agents yep, mm-hmm. you were take, right? Yep. At the time of this, maybe you'll have a hundred, who knows? But um, I'll, I'll probably have fifty. I'm I'm we sign in some um a big company. This week. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 2023, 50 yep. agents. Perfect. So mm-hmm. if I told you, all right, I want to work with Thumbprint Realty, and I emailed every one of those agents, yeah. or I could email you, Alex e. Edwards, broker owner of the company, and getting good with you, wouldn't we'll you think your in. agents would want to use me if they go through of you first? Like, it's just, it's a no-brainer. So, it so saves me so much time. That's a gem job, right? It's a gem job. So, so time is money. You and I have very expensive hourly rates, right, if we're going to be working. Correct. So if I want to get efficient... I got to find the right person. Man, I, I love no that brainer. gem. I love that gem. Thank no you for brainer. that. That that made me feel real good. And I hope it made our viewers feel good and listeners feel good because, you know, a lot of people are working stupid. Yeah. And working extremely there's hard. Really, they they will it, take them. They will knock on each door. Yeah. And there's no, you can still do that. Yeah, I'm like, you, but, but like, and I, I don't, the thing I don't like about people, like, you know, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, people yeah, like yeah. him. I feel like. Wait, you don't like him? No, no, I, I do. But I, the, the, you said you didn't like him. The things I don't like, like about him. I'm trying to get clicks. You say you don't <laughs> like Gary V? Gary V, I love you, but I have a couple <laughs> issues. Um, the thing that I don't always ascribe to is like you just have to work 100 hours a week and like just stress, don't sleep, don't yeah, do this, yeah, like yeah. that, sleep, so build a business. And like it is true to a certain yeah. extent, but like if you can just be smart about your time, yeah. isn't that better? Like work smarter, not harder? There's I, a fine balance between so, that. But if you're working 100 hours to get X amount of money when you can work 50 hours and get that much money. And now you have that much more time to spend with your wife, building your body and working out and things like that. That to me seems like it's a lot easier of a life than 
<laughs> I, working on her out because I've done that. It's not fun. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent, honestly, with you. Um, I think you have to understand product and services. Yeah, product you don't have to work a lot. Service you do have to work a lot. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, and but once you start hiring, like you did, because you said you was working a lot. Yeah, right. Yeah, and then start putting people in in place that you trust, um, like Ryan Curtis. Julia, right? Yeah. Julie, um, you, it, now you can kind of not rest, but now you can think about how to grow the business. Well, I can focus on. Yeah, you could coach. I, I can work outside, yeah. growing the team, 100%. and looking at my missing pieces, and that that's your position at, at this point. You know what's so? This always is is in my head. A client told me this. Like, there's a difference between working for your company and yeah. working on your company. Correct. So what you just said is if I can delegate work and I can do the bigger picture stuff, now I'm working on my company. Yeah. I'm not always shooting, editing. That's working for your company, and that's great. But as an owner for you, like imagine if you're selling everything and talking to clients and closings and going to inspections. Uh, you it, you couldn't do it. it was, yeah, <laughs> you could not I, do that. I, I, when I decided to say, all right, I can't work with clients anymore and I have to grow the brokerage, yeah, I, I went, um, my, my income dropped tremendously mine did um, too yeah you know and i was all right well if my income dropped tremendously that mean i wasn't working smart enough mm. right because if the company depend on my income then i you know like you said i am working for the company right so i was like all right well i got to i got to figure stuff out i have to get more quality um people around me I have to run it like a like a business, um, and I have to focus focus on things that no one else would think of. Mm. Right, yeah. that's my job. My job is yeah. doing what I could only do. Yeah, and that's, that's it. That's that's such a good right? point. Yeah. And to to make sure everyone else is good because no one else is going to run Thumbprint like you. No, and one people else. are probably going to use Thumbprint right. because they love Alexi Edwards. They love what you do. They love yeah. what you stand for. So there's no one that can replace you for that. Correct. But if you're running, if you're running yourself ragged. I'm not, not going to be the real. I can't Alex be here right now. No, yeah, I can't do. I just came from Gem Job Zoom. Now I'm Gem Job Live. Yeah, I can't do that. Hundred percent. Right. So. 100%. So. Um, that's. I feel like <laughs> we're kind of going. In, we. Hey, you met me at the runway, huh? You got that. <laughs> I just feel like we're going and we went down the same path. Yeah. Um, that's why I feel like and this is not an aside, but like that's really why I like working with you. Like yeah. I know there's things that come up and like we got to get on the right track a lot yeah, of yeah. times too. But I feel like you're trajectory of things like makes sense to me yeah because you're you're trying to work hard you're doing the right thing and you might go off the path sometimes and you gotta get back on it yeah. and i think like for me the biggest blessing was to get the people in the right place because now that i have a team to go to this two hundred thousand dollar project i could not have done that if i didn't build up a team years and years and years ago and now i have it now yep. so and that project to answer that initial question you had of how how i got that Two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollar just project shy of that for project working for free for free yeah. So the free to, work let me, thing. Let me, let me, take let me a sip take of that. What toast. is what is that? This is some uh, apple juice from Shea Butter Smoothies um, in Dorchester. Ah, uh, are they going to sponsor the podcast next? They might have to. They, they have. You to should now. look look into that camera and make you take have a sip. to sponsor them. This is fresh quality apple juice from Shea Butter. Uh, they are located right next to Lambert's in Dorchester. The next 20 smoothies are for free, and the next 30 apple juices are for free, or I'm not running this commercial. Whoa. This is just regular water. I don't think we're going to get a sponsor for this. Yeah, we have the... Well, well, well hide, hide it. Yeah. Get that. Purified there you go. water. Purified yeah. water. Wolsey Farms. Wolsey Farms. Okay. I don't know. They need to talk to us. They owe us a little sign. <laughs> um, so, so, so <laughs> you're working for free for 200000 Yeah. I, I just don't want that to go over anyone's head. Yeah. Right? Yep. So you get this contract, and it was to do a documentary. Yep. You do this documentary. How long did the documentary take? Julie, how long did it take? I think like a year and a half total. A year and a half. Filming, editing, all, all that right, year and cool. a half. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. So let's say $100,000 a year. Right? Fair enough. Yeah. Average, most likely, um, average person probably make around $50,000 a year. Yep. So you did something for free to make four people 
for 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 um a four person uh, sorry four people's income right that's kind of how i thought of it yeah right yeah and now and it's not about the money it's about growing your company it's more opportunities that it's it, more that opportunity because now yeah. like all right well let me go get more yeah the more you get yep. again the more your company grow yep. the more your company grow the more your partners are happy yep. the more your partners are happy then again, you could keep going off doing things that only you could think of. Yeah. Because now you create a culture and they see, hey, we did this together and now we all benefit. That's 100% accurate. Yeah. Like that's that's 100%. You're not going to go that. buy a red Lambo and go to Dubai. No. no you know? Well, maybe. You know, but but so that 200000 right? And in the same, um, and, and during this time, you're looking for a home. Yes. Yes. Yep. yep. You're looking for a home and you stumble across a home that's in distress. That's putting it lightly. Distress. Well, yeah. okay. Yes. You you a crack a crack house? <laughs> it was close to that. A crack house. <laughs> very okay. very close to that. Well, you look you you find a home that's like um in distress like I said, right? Yeah. Yep. And you're like we could do this. Yeah. I'm an architect. I never flipped a home. I never renovated a home. Yep. I'm going to GC it. I'm going to get some help. My wife's an architect. Yep. So that helps. Yep. Yep. And I am going to uh, shoot with Alex, act like I'm recording, but really just take all his information. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but but honestly, you 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 find this home, and you because I I love this this about you. You met him at the runway again. Yeah. Do you realize that? You met him at the runway again with yeah, no it, parachute. Yeah. And timing <laughs> timing for things is kind of weird how things work. And like everything kind of I have a lot of faith in things in life, but timing like it, is timing. timing was was kind Perfect. of weird how it worked. Yeah. Um but but the so this this all came about because so when my wife and I got married in 2021 mm-hmm. and we were looking for a house after that. So mm-hmm. I looked at mortgage after marriage which yep. i know i'll buy the book and i'll read why i should have done the opposite but yep. um so we were looking for a house for a while in the market it was just terrible mm-hmm. especially in our area like the northern south shore things were very expensive and um just kind of hard to find the right house or things would go super quick mm-hmm. like ridiculously quick mm-hmm. and we were doing this documentary for weymouth and i'm like oh this town is actually like really cool it's growing there's a lot of cool things happening and Maybe we could look in Weymouth. And then mm-hmm. sure enough, not that long after thinking about that, this little house popped up in Weymouth. And um, the client, funny enough, who the documentary was with, he's a realtor. My dad's a realtor too, but I went after George because he knew the homeowner really well. So I'm like, okay, maybe we can yeah, yeah. try to get him to talk about us, the homeowner, maybe get a good deal, whatever, whatever. And uh we end up seeing the house, an open house. There's a couple people that go, and they're all looking around like, what the hell is this? And it was in rough shape. There were mm-hmm. holes in the wall. It smelled like, um, like a cat. There was just, it was honestly, there was no lights in the house. Walls were full of mold. It was really bad. Honestly, mm. really bad. Mm. Doors were super tight, small. It was kind of like terrible. a dream house to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. My wife and I were like, okay, this is where we're at. But, no. okay, so be it. Um, but we saw other people looking. They're like, this is not for us. And my wife and I looked at, I looked at each other like, this, this is, is for fun. us. <laughs> yeah, like we could totally make this work. Yeah. And um, we left the open house and immediately were like, all right, contacted George. George, I want to put an offer on the house. Like, how can we make this work? We negotiated, okay. got the house. Slow down. Slow down. Oh, this slow is our down. first date. All right. Slow down. <laughs> I'm excited. The house is done now. So, What was the listing price? Uh, I think it was listed for four fifteen. What was the offer price? We offered three ninety five. Accepted negotiated right away. Up, no, oh. we negotiated up to four hundred five. So four hundred five. Yeah. Okay. So ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand off. Yeah. Okay. And you look at this home. Obviously, you have a vision. Yeah. Um. How how much money did you put in construction? We, which so we're currently still working on it, but mm-hmm. I think as of right now, we're probably pretty close to forty, fifty thousand dollars into it, which is wow. not terrible. No, I that's, will no, say that's, that's really what, good. The, the reason why we, is is that it is that way. It's because my father-in-law is a builder, 
and my dad was a builder. So like we, if we had to pay yeah. a contractor to do it, it would have been double the price. Correct. We did most of the work ourselves. Father-in-law did the work too for reno. So like that was why we kind of so, so got a good okay. deal on so it. So you, know, you bought the home, you had the vision, and you had the tools. You had 100%. these people in your life that also was going to meet you at the runway. Yep. Um, and they made this happen with you. Yep. We had the vision. My wife and I had the vision, yep. being an architect. Yep. Father-in-law was a builder. Yep. Dad was a builder. Yep. Uncle's a roofer. Family members were electricians and all wow. that. So we knew before this we could have leveraged their their abilities. And wow. so when we thought about the budget, we're like, okay, we could Do this. get this at a steal. Yeah, like it's a no, it's a no brainer. I know it's in rough shape, but yeah. like we could make this work to what we want it to. So work. how much is the house worth now? Uh, I mean, I'd Let's say throw something out there, close to five hundred probably. Wow. On this mark, it'll it'll keep going up. We have yeah. a lot more things we have to do still, but I'd say wow. we, we definitely have a lot of equity in the house at this point. It could be more. I don't. I haven't looked at comps in the area yeah. just yet, but uh, we could. Yeah, we we made our money back. So, and so, then some for so sure. What's next? Are you are you now buying more property? Because it sounds like gonna, you have. Yeah. It sounds like you have the team. Yeah, and they well, probably want to get involved. Like, well, if you find the next deal, I want to get yeah. in. Yeah, we'd like to. So the house is right now. We have a couple more things to do. So. Just in, and I know you know this, but we gutted the entire house, new kitchen, new floors, new everything. Still, we want to put new windows. The windows are from 1955. They're terrible, yeah. leaky, so we'll do new windows. The basement is all dirt, so we're going to pour a slab, have an actual foundation on yep. the bottom, and then central air. Once we kind of finish all that, the house will be essentially, uh, to our standards, done. Right. We'll get the best value. We'll figure out where we are in the market, and then either we'll sell it soon, or we'll sit on it for a couple yep. of years and then sell it from there. But we would like to try to take some of the equity at some point to buy another house. So what's the pros and cons of, of, of doing it this way? Like, why didn't you just go and, I want to buy a dream home and, yeah. and you know, that's it. Why did you go distress and say, hey, I have a vision. I'm going to do it this way. What's the pros and cons? Um, so I'll start with the cons first. Yep. I think there's, there's definitely a couple that are there. So the cons, it's a huge time suck. There, it takes a long time to do this because we were doing it ourselves. I was running a company. My wife was busy working from home and choosing the office. So I just it took it took three months to get it done, which is quick for construction. But again, it took a while. We were living in there during construction. We lived with my sister in law, so we were just I was living out of my car, and so it was like it was stressful to that extent, mm-hmm. right? Um, and the market at that time, we just couldn't afford anything. So like we would love to get a dream house, but we just basically couldn't afford anything in that area. The pros, though, are we got a house that looks like our dream house. It's small, but we got to design every little piece of that. The backsplash, the countertops, the flooring, the paint, the door, everything that we did, we got to do ourselves, mm-hmm. which is the biggest biggest pro. Mm-hmm. And because we bought Distressed, we knew that if we put some money into it, we're going to get that equity back. We looked at the neighborhood. The neighborhoods are all similar to our homes, a little bit newer, but not as new as our homes. So we mm-hmm. knew if we put in... 50, 60, 70 into it, we'll be able to get that money back and then some, like, pretty immediately. Okay. So it, w- it was more of a, as a design, you know, decision. We could have an exact house that we would want. Obviously, the floor plan can't change that much, but finishes, paint colors, we could get ourselves. We're going to build it and design it so that when we do go to sell it, it'll be a no-brainer for someone to buy it. Three bed, two bath, one level, ranch, simple as it is. So, Super right, simple. So I want, I, want, I want to talk more about that, but we're going to go um, to a quick 30-second break. and got a word from our sponsors, all right? Selling a home can be one of the most lucrative things you can do in your life, and choosing the right real estate brokerage will ensure that. In that case, Thumbprint Realty should be your only choice. So before you sell, call Thumbprint Realty at 617-287-9000. Thumbprint Realty, real estate done right. All right, y'all, this episode is brought to you by our company, Hawk Visuals. We are a digital media company and we specialize in video production for your brand. Storytelling, photography as well, but we really help you get cinematic and amazing video content for your brand. If you're looking for video production or other digital needs, you can visit us at hawkvisualsmedia.com or email us at hawk at hawkvisualsmedia.com. Back to the podcast. So before we went to break, we was talking about your vision. 
of like already selling it and you already have in 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 your mind you already have the next family that's living at your property yep. and you probably haven't been in there for a year yet this was like after month one wow yeah, yeah. right so yeah. i think it's extremely important that everyone understand when you buying a home and when you're renovating a home you're not renovating only for yourself you're renovating for the next family totally. so if you put something in your home that's like really just for you it's going to be harder for you to 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 um to sell it right so if you say well i like my basement i like my kitchen in the basement well guess what probably 99 yeah. percent of families do not like the kitchen in their basement they don't they don't like it yeah right so so you have to think about the next generation when you when you're thinking about flipping when you think about buying your home you have to think of the next buyer and you know what's funny? So the same way that I approach business where I'm thinking of this client, but like past that, it's the exact same thing yeah. with this, so right? So when you're doing it for free, you're yeah. like, well... Yeah, it's the you... same kind of thing, except yeah. obviously it's not... I wish it was yeah. free. <laughs> but, but no, no, man, the, but, the idea of doing the idea something of for free for the next client. Something. Yeah, exactly. Correct. So when we were designing the house, we have like... And obviously it's our style, but our style yeah. is like gray yeah. and white. Yeah, everyone like, loves it. Yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. loves open floor plan, the, the whole yeah. kind of thing. So like we knew... That we would love it, but then like the next person wouldn't do anything. They moved in and it's a brand new house and that's it. Yeah. So we did think about what we wanted, but we're like, let's think about 10 years or five years past this. The next person coming in, yeah, they're not going to want a giant wall separating the kitchen living room. It's a small house. Open it up. Open floor plan. White countertops. Simple color schemes like a pot filler, which I stole that from you. Yeah. <laughs> um, things that I knew someone would want. And yes. to elevate our house to a little bit more of a luxury house on a on a budget. Yeah. I, so when I when I flip homes, I try to make it very convenient for the buyer. Like in in what way? So, me personally, every time the cleaners come to my house, I don't know I don't know what they do, but my charger the block is it just comes out. It's it's out of the outlet, right? Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, why? What are you doing behind my bed? I don't know. Oh yeah, they're probably sweeping, duh. <laughs> but but Hopefully then but, sweeping, yeah. yeah, but but hap, but this was ha this this what happens. I get in my bed, I think my charger's still plugged in. Yeah. I plug in my phone, and next morning is dead. I'm like, yo, it gotta be a better way. So when I flip homes, I put the C type and I put the USB outlet. So you don't need the block. You don't need a block. Our kitchen island. Yeah. yeah, totally. I don't need a block. Totally. I put it in every single bedroom um, where the nightstand should go. I put it on a on a counter. Put them by the island. Like si simple stuff like that. Convenience. Next, yeah. Yeah. Convenience. Next is the cable box. The cable box is this big thing that's somewhere, right? I create a place for the cable box, right? If it's mm -hmm. if you gonna put it behind the TV, it's a hole behind the TV that sits, and your TV still could be flush. So you're, de you're designing it so that yeah. it's not Yep, spot. and it's all, and I already did. Yep. Next is Alexa. We all have Alexa or we all have Google Home. Alexa, I want to be honest with you, or Google Home. Oh, yeah. I have a, I'm not sure I have Alexa. Speaking of that. Yeah, <laughs> speaking of yes, thank you. This could be sponsored by you or Google Home, just saying. Uh, but, but we have Alexa. Uh, we have... Jesus. We have a space for it in the wall, right? So you now you just put it on the wall. It don't have to be on the counter. Mm. It could be right there in the wall, almost like a, 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 a TV screen. Yeah. Right? Next, we have um, this product by Moen. Oh, phenomenal product, right? I could I could tell the, the product, turn on the shower, Alex temperature, voice. Shower comes on, my temperature, right? Wow. I could do it with my phone. Or I could do it with Alexa, right? And like it's just convenient. So if I'm coming home and I know I have to take a quick shower, well, let me just turn my shower on real quick. Um, because on those those on call water heaters, it takes a little time to warm up. So boom, I'm parking my car, showers on, I run upstairs, quick showers, already hot, I'm out, cool. I use the bathroom, flush on its own, clean on its own. You know? So certain things like that that I'm like, you know what, let's Let's even if I make I, even if I make fifty thousand dollars profit, I'm okay with it, and I'll tell mm. you why. Because my portfolio is going to be much better than everybody else, right? So, with that being said, if the city of Boston say I want to build a fifty-unit um, building, who should I go to? 
but I want it to be convenient, efficient. Who I'm gonna go to? Alex E. Edwards. I'm I'm the only one in my lane. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. thinking, I'm thinking this way. I'm not thinking about what I actually do. Mm. This is all on this this is my resume. These are the condos I built. These are the homes I built. Show me who did it, who 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 does it better. Well, it's funny you say that because I know what we've done six or seven of your properties, right? And I can mm-hmm. tell that there's a diff- a similarity between all of them, yep. right? Like even with, I think the Carter has a pot filler. Correct. The microwave and the Correct. island. So like there's things that like even with, with nowhere or something, like you, you can notice the things that you're doing and yeah. it's like across the board. So yeah, if someone didn't go after you, yeah. it was like an Alex E. Edwards style, which is like the hybrid of a little bit of luxury, right? Yep. But like an affordable luxury yep. makes sense. It's like easy it's, it's living. Easy to live. Yeah, easy to easy live in. Easy exactly. living. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. All the little things you don't even think about is simple. Yep. So let's get back to your home. What lender did you choose? We use Loan Depot. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, are, how are they? They Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we, we use them. They're recommended by my dad, who's a realtor. Other realtors recommended. Uh, we use them. And uh, just the, the team that works with Jessica, who's who's kind of the, the loan officer, she's just like unreal. If, if she couldn't answer a question, someone else would oh, call us. Because this is Gem Job. This yeah. is what I love about Gem Job. Yeah. Who's Jessica? She's the loan officer at Loan Depot. What's her last name? Good question. Oh, man. I'll have to put in Celia. I think it's Celia. Okay. I'm so bad with last names. All right. I think so I, we can, we'll put it in the screen yeah, somewhere. And her contact. <laughs> and her contact. Of course, your yeah. access is okay. 100%. If you're, I don't know what her, how far she goes out, but if you're in the South Shore, like yep. 100% hey. use her. She, and I also use her because of connections. She had an amazing attorney, lawyer, all the people that she worked with were unreal. So mm-hmm. because I got her, I got an attorney. I got everybody that I needed Who's your to attorney? get. Uh, Patrick Foley. Okay, from? he's at a. I don't know the company name. It's mm-hmm. his practice, but they're at a Marina Bay in Quincy. Oh, fancy! Really good. The, the guy's like six six, super heavy accent. Amazing guy though. He'll fight. He'll fight for us tooth and nail for sure. Which happened. So I'll tell a story with him. So mm-hmm. when we day of closing, everything's yeah. good. We're like, all right, we're good to go. Um, we show up at the at the house and we notice part of part of the the details were in the backyard. The homeowner cut down trees. Mm-hmm. And there were tons of trees. We wanted it out. There was trash. Wanted it out. The attic had trash. Got to go. That was part of the thing. We all agreed to it. Good to go. Day of the closing, we go to the house. Trees are in the backyard. Trash in the backyard. And all the stuff is in the attic. Yep. So I called my realtor and I said, hey, listen, like this is not cool. This is happening. We got to fix this. Realtor called their the, the family's realtor and said, hey, like what what's going on here? This is not cool. Um, you know, what are we going to do about this? And there was a lot of fighting back and forth. We got Patrick involved and said, listen, if this is not out by five o'clock at night, we're going to hold back $5,000, right? So wouldn't you know it, the realtor showed up with his son and they physically got rid of everything. They hired a tree company to take the trees out. They hired a cleaning company to help clean stuff. Him and his son clean out the attic and they got it all done by five o'clock. But Patrick was fighting for us. Say like, if you don't get this done for my client, we're going to hold back money for you. So if, if he wasn't like that, I wouldn't yeah, have known yeah. to do that. I, I'm my first house, first time doing it. That's someone you yeah, want to have on your exactly. team to fight for you. I, yeah. Hands down, I do that all the time for my clients. Yeah. Like, look, I, we just hold back 5000 and I want, and um, <laughs> so in our offer, we put all fixtures and appliances um, should remain in place and in working order. Right? Yeah. So do you, do you know why I do that in every single office? Was there a time that it didn't happen that way? No. This is what happens. <laughs> so the the seller sometimes takes the washing machine. The seller sometimes takes the fridge. So I do my walkthrough. I know the washing machine is gone and the fridge is gone. So I'm oh like, God. well, in my offer, I wrote remain in place and in working order. So what happened now, the seller just now has to buy brand new Washing and dryer and a fridge for the client. Honestly, it probably happened fifty percent of all my offers. Because fifty percent of the time, because the sellers don't, the, the the seller agent don't look at the offer fully. They look at the number. Well, I'm sure the 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 client must be pissed at the agent. Then, of course, that wasn't in, I mean that's not my side. No, but, right? but I'm saying like yeah, of course uh, on on their side. Yeah, they're so pissed. it's like yeah, because because the agent oh they offer you this amount of money and they closing at this month and that's it. That's all they care about. 
Nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Can you imagine that? So, so I'm like, this. don't worry about it. We okay. We'll just hold back 5000 until we get this. Yeah. You know? So Money shout out talks. to your attorney. If you, you threaten them with 5000 bucks, they're like, my guy, hands they're going to take the stuff out of the house because they don't want to lose that five grand. Hands down. That's another gem drop. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome to all the other agents out You're there. You know, they're going to they're gonna know all the thumbprint. The no, they're gonna, they're gonna steal all your tricks. Yeah, of course. You better be careful. With of this course, podcast. or they're gonna actually start reading the the offers, right? Yeah. Um. So so we we spoke about your lender. We spoke about your attorney. What product did you use? So we had a conventional thirty year. Okay. Um. We did it. So um. With my business, because it's kind of it fluctuates with income mm-hmm. and things like that. It was under my wife's name. Mm-hmm. She has amazing credit. Eight hundred and something. Cool. She makes. Pretty good money. Mm-hmm. And then that way I could still hold on to my first time home buyer ability if I did go for another house and I could buy under my name mm-hmm. and keep it. So we were trying to be sneaky with, with that. But yeah, it's, it's uh, we got it for at the time 5%, okay. 5.2 ish, mm-hmm. something like that, conventional yep. 30 year. Yep. Um, and that was a product that we, that we all used. Right. All right, all right, all right, all right. You dropped some gems again. This is a lot of gems. You said I put the home is under my wife's name. Yep. So I could go buy another home and use the first time home buyer again. Yep. Did you just say that? I did say that. Mm. Yep. Interesting. Don't let that yep. go over. A lot of you, oh, I want, I want to be on the loan too. I don't trust you. Well, guess yeah. what? If you don't trust me, why are you married to me? Yeah. That's right? exactly. So now, yeah. so now, yeah. so now you could go and buy any home you want and yeah. put down 3%. Yeah. Yeah. Right? 100%. Just because you trust your wife. Mm-hmm. Damn. Mm-hmm. Gem drop. Gem drop. Gem drop, gem drop, right? So that's very interesting, right? And you brought it up. I didn't bring it up, but I feel like, but but I hope some credit to you too, because mm-hmm. and I, I talked to some other real estate clients, but I feel like because you you are in the best way possible, like sneaky and like there's things that you you do that like is sneaky enough, but like it makes it makes sense that most yeah. people don't think about. Correct. That to me was getting my brain thinking of okay, so if my wife can just buy it by herself. And I am yeah. unfazed. It's, it's not sneaky. It's intelligence. Sneaky is kind of like yeah. I'm a crook or something. Yeah, it's well, it's it's Pain. smart crook. What do you say about? Yeah, you're a smart crook. A legal yeah. crook. Legal. That's, that's legal the word. crook. Legal crook. Legal, legal crook. Legal when crook. the Patriots took some air out, it was legal at the time. That's true. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're bringing that back again. It was legal. <laughs> it, gate was legal at the time. True. It's not legal anymore. Not anymore. So if they do it again, they in trouble. It's true. But, you can't do it twice. Only once. You, you, only, you only get one. Only but, get but, one. But, but, but honest, a lot of you know, it, it comes. We're now talking about mortgage before marriage. Okay, in this case, you did, um, you did marriage before mortgage. Yeah. But yes or no, right? You you still was smart enough to say, you know what? I'm going to put this financial responsibility on one person. Yeah. Right. Because. I think in a marriage, if I'm making a lot of money, I have good credit, right? And and it could go both ways. I have good credit. I'm making a lot of money. I'm not putting a car in my name. Yeah. Doesn't make no sense. You putting debt in my name, why? Let's yeah. go buy a big building with my name. Yeah. You go buy a car. You yeah. know? Because you have to think. Let's not go half on a car. That makes no sense. Now, the both that same debt is, say, the car's $30,000. Mm-hmm. $30,000 on you? And thirty thousand dollars on me, yeah. How does that make sense? But also, it's not even fifteen. Fifteen is thirty on you yeah. and thirty on me. And yeah. now together we have a sixteen sixty thousand dollar loan, but it's really thirty. But it's mm-hmm. reported on me and you. But even for you too, as a as a owner of a business, yeah. like you can put like have the company buy that car. Correct. So like, and and the way that we're trying to think of this, like, okay, like the house is under your name. Yep. She needs a new car soon. So like, maybe I could buy it as a part of my company, and that's a company car. She's Ooh. somehow able to use it, and Gym now drop. I get a tax credit. All right, right. Jim drop. Here <laughs> it goes. Drop. So let's go. Let's go in. Let's yeah. go real in real quick. Yeah. Because of course, you know, I buy, I buy cars. I love that car you just got. Yeah. The, the, I, I just I bought um, within two years. I bought a Range Rover, yeah. and I just bought a Porsche. Yeah. Right. And all under the company name, yeah. right? So the the thing I realized, because I totaled the Range Rover, I totaled the Range Rover, and uh, I could finally talk about it. I almost lost my life. But I totaled the Range Rover. But what I realized, the points don't go against me because it's under my business name. So my my driving record is still prestige. I was like, oh, yeah. my God, I'm totally another car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> but but no, nah, but the, the power of LLCs, yeah. the power yep. of your business, 
Yep. Right. And I always tell everyone, if you don't have an LLC, you 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 just saying, hey, I just want to be comfortable for the rest of life and pay a lot of taxes. And it costs, what, 500 bucks to start an LLC? Exactly. It's not that much so, money. So think and, about it. If I didn't put the yeah. car under the LLC, my driving record would be damaged. Yeah. Right? I would be paying way more than $500 in, in mm-hmm. insurance. Mm-hmm. Nobody probably want to touch me. Yeah. Right? So the power LLCs will save you a lot of money. And then there's a write-off. Look, put it like this. Just like I tell te- um, tenants that's not paying rent. I give you money to leave or I give that same money to my attorney. You pick. Hmm. You pick. Yeah, interesting. Right? Yeah. Yep. With, with with LLC, you could give the money to the IRS or you give it to Range Rover. You pick. When, yeah. I got that Range Rover. I threw it on Toro. I think it was, I, I want to say it was $500 a, no, it was $300 a day. Man, let it go. Do your hmm. thing. You know, so I was, I, was, I, I did, I, I, I skipped on paying taxes. Um, well, it was a write off, not skipped on paying taxes, but it was a write off and still made money on top of what I didn't pay in taxes. And people aren't thinking about that. Right? Yeah. So it was like, it, it was mm-hmm. a no brainer. No brainer. No yeah. brainer. Right? Yeah. So, so yeah, you are thinking the right way about the LLCs and you are thinking the right way. By putting your wife on a mortgage, and now again, if you decide, hey, I want a, a bigger home, or a, a nice deal came up, and it's a we we cannot pass on this. You know what? I'm about to buy that home, three percent down. I'm going to FHA. We moving out. We're gonna rent this home. We're gonna make some money, or we're gonna put it on the market, or we're gonna pull out uh, equity line of credit. Whatever we're gonna do, this home is gonna make us go to another another home, and that's it. And you're gonna leverage. Yeah. And plus, and I'm curious what you think too. So like, if if that is the case, right? Yep. So second house we're gonna get. Open up an LLC and buy it that way. Is that well? You still have your first time home buyer class. You can't. Right, you can't but, use the LLC like, for your could, first could time. Could I use the LLC to rent the space out to my own company if it's no, an you LLC? Could, yeah. I mean, we we're in my own space now. Yeah. This so call my more gem drops. Right, here it goes. Here we go. Here it goes. So this so this particular home we're in, we're in a basement. I want to let y'all know we're in a basement, right? The LLC owns the entire house, right? So the L- the whole entire house is on the LLC, and then that uh, a, a a tenant rents from the LLC. Two tenants rent from the LLC. One is a individual, and another is a business. What business rent from the LLC? What you think? What's the business name? Nowhere. Nowhere. Nowhere LLC rents from um, the house LLC. Who do you think control both LLCs? Is he sitting next to me right now? Kaboom. Yeah. Yeah. Kaboom, right? So, and to and to refinance because I I bought this home hard money, and how I refinanced was, you have to show lease that you're making leases that is rented out, and you're making money to is refinance. Is there a certain period that you have to show that for the leases? I here it goes. I just said the lease is starting in three months for this floor. Upstairs, the lease is starting again in three months. Approved. Okay. The numbers have to make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So even I said, nowhere's paying, uh, um, nowhere's paying $5,000 a month, right? Cool. Cool. But guess what? Nowhere also have to pay me as well. Hmm. So the money is just recycling. It's legal. It's all legal. The money is just re- recycling. That's, right? Yeah. I'm going to write that down. Right? Smart. And and then next week, someone else is renting the space. Yeah. It's like your car. It's yeah. Like if you someone can... else is renting the space next week. Yep. We Someone threw a, a private party um, a week ago. $500 per person. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, look, it's a beautiful place and people, and you can, you can smoke. You can do yeah. whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a private space for the private. Yep. Right? No cameras. Do as you please. Mm. No one's gonna judge you, right? Uh, it's yeah. So it's so I know we went down Smart. a rabbit hole, um, but I, I just you you brought up the LOCs and I think we we dropped a lot of gems just now, and I hope that didn't go over no one's head. I look, get yourself an LLC, get yourself a, a a partner that you could trust and that's willing to hey I'll take this debt, you go get another debt as as long as this debt is bringing us money who 
cares. Yeah. It's all about leveling up. Yep. And you have to trust the person you're with. If you have any doubt with the person you're with, then it, that's a sign that mm, you probably shouldn't be with this person. Hmm. Yeah, it's money is a big issue with divorce, right? I'm sure. So it's like if yeah, if money problems are happening, yeah. it's not, you not have, good. So. You have to speak. Did you guys come up with a, like a financial plan? Did y'all talk about finances? Yeah, we, we did. I mean, we're we're as as we you know are doing more of these kind of ventures. Like we we talk more about finances and like because we're you know want to have kids soon yeah. and like okay, daycare is a lot of money. How do we plan for that? How do we plan for the next house? How do we plan for cars? Things yeah. like that. So it's it's something that we're not shying away from yeah, because you perfect. you have to it, it's it is definitely something that can be awkward for people to talk about, but yeah. it shouldn't shouldn't be like yeah. it's just you're I'm trying to help you out help me out figure out our life together. Money is the way you're going to pay for life. So like you need to talk about money. Yeah. Right. And I know you talk about that in the book. A lot, mortgage so. before marriage, yeah. finances before fiance, Rockefeller before Beyonce. I feel like someone's going to say it just like me. Beyonce. In my <laughs> mind, I feel like a cry. I hear the crowd. <laughs> Beyonce. I'm going to be like, yes, I told y'all that really happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is like way in your head at this yeah, point. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Yo, remember, because I'm just like you. I'm thinking ahead, bro. I'm thinking ahead. When you you're work a billionaire for on stage in front of thousands of people. I'm thinking about trillions. Trillions. Like, yo, what? God. If I could take this show onto another planet, what they going? What's doing? What they doing on Mars? Let me see. What, you know what I'm saying? You'll be there with Elon Musk hey, up there. Elon doing Musk space is, a, podcast. is a cancer, just like me. You know. There you go. Um, but all right, so. Respect your breath. Yeah. Right? So in, in this segment, we how are you respecting your breath? Are you living in your in, in in are you living your passion? Do you feel like you're doing everything that God has asked you to do or your higher power has asked you to do? I think yes, and I'm still working on it. I think the that moment of respecting your breath happened when I did make that jump mm-hmm. to do, you know, this full time. And I think running a business, owning a business, being responsible for financial freedom and freedom and schedule is like really what it comes down to, which is what I really enjoy and love the most. There's still things I'm working on. Like I need to get better at getting back to, you know, taking care of my physical self more. Cause that's like when you get busy at work, that sometimes yeah. falls off. So it's a, it's, it's a work in progress, but I do feel that the purpose that I have is to run a business, create financial freedom for myself and my wife, and you know, down the road, if we can have kids and a nice house and nicer cars and you know, travel a lot and things like that, and I can help with that, then like that's that's the best outcome by having a freedom of running a company. So, what does success mean to you? I don't think there's necessarily like a a, a money value to success, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I, and a lot of people might think I need this much money no, and things no, no. like that. I think success for me is when uh, freedom in various aspects of my life is attainable and mm-hmm. like somewhat somewhat easy to get i have to work for it but i can get there gotcha. so what i mean is like financial freedom if we need to buy a car no problem we'll buy that if someone in the family is sick and needs money to take care of themselves no problem i got you that's success to me if i can have a family and i'm great with my wife and we're connecting and you know our kids being raised to be a great person too. that's success to me so there's a lot of different things success in the gym physically and fit. There's a lot of different things that obviously success can be, but when all those different things happen at the same time, then it's like my life is good. All right. Not there yet, but mortgage before marriage or marriage before mortgage. And if you could do it all over. Um, I would do what I did still. Still? Marriage before mortgage. I know it contradicts the book that you have, no, but I no, think no, but I think about, No, no, this is about you. I'm yeah. asking you a question. But I think I would I would do it again. Mm-hmm. I would do it again. I think where we are would make sense. I think maybe, you know, if we made different financial decisions mm-hmm. that maybe we could have bought a multifamily first. That's mm-hmm. probably what I would have done. And in retrospect, it just didn't and line the, up. The tenants would just pay for and your then, wedding. Yeah, they would have paid for my wedding like they did with yours. Yeah. So uh, that probably was where I would have done that first. But yeah. I don't necessarily know if I would have had to marry. I knew I was going to marry her after like, the second year of, of dating her. You know, it's so, easier to fall in love than to become a millionaire. I believe that. Oh, I believe that. So why would we chase love first? I'm not saying you, but why would people chase love first if it's easier to f- find love than become a millionaire or 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 or, or wealthy? I'll say just wealthy. It's harder to become wealthy than find love. 
Well, yeah. Well, I think there's emotion involved with love where there's not really emotion in making money. You could be a cutthroat businessman, forget all your friends and family and make a million. But now if you don't have a... You're not happy. Probably. You're not happy. Mm-hmm. So I think I think there is a there is a thing with money doesn't buy happiness. I think it definitely buys happiness for sure, but it's in the right context. <laughs> I think I think integrity, your yeah, integrity is everything. Yeah. Like I, I was I was I was born financial I was born financially broke. Yeah. But morally rich. Right? Yeah. So I, I think integrity is everything, right? And it's you know, it's something in you that constantly keep you going. Yeah. Like, oh, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Well, you more, want to prove more, yourself. More, I want more. Yeah. To yourself. To yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that's I. You can't put a price on that because you mm-hmm. probably have siblings. I don't know. But younger, you, younger brother. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Maybe they're not like you. They from the same mother, same yeah. father. Y'all just different. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying less or more, but you know, it's only one you. Mm. And whatever lights your fire. It's priceless. So that's gonna keep you Damn. going. Gem drop. You know what I'm saying? Gem drop. Gem drop. But that's gonna keep you going. So um how can people reach you, Matt? So if you wanna find out more about the business that we run, mm-hmm. you go to hawkvisualsmedia.com. You can check out all of our work. We're on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, the whole thing. If you look at that, I got a personal YouTube, Matthew Mulligan. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, and all of that. I won't put my phone number here, but you can yeah. text me if you want. But uh, yeah, the Hawk Visuals is where you'll see most of our work. And I think us as a company, we're growing and uh, I think we're doing some pretty amazing work this year, especially. So if you want to keep up to date and see what eight years of video work has led up to, then you should follow our social media because you'll see the result of that. Got you, got you. And sorry. And do you have any last words? Like when I die or just right now? Right now. (laughs) No, I think... um, Any last tips? Any last... Sorry, any last gems? I think, and I'll reiterate this again, is is your your time is going to be valuable as a business owner, right? So if you can be smart about your decisions, go after the right people, find your tribe, as people say, so your employees, your... Uh, your partners, people are going to help you get to that level you want to get to. That's what you should be focusing on is focus on the people who can help you get to that point. It's not about what you know. I know this is such like a cliche thing. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. That could not be any more truer about myself and my company. I'm where I am now because the people I've met, the people I've hired, people who get to work with me, and it just, it makes sense. So like if, if, if that is part of your vision for a business is focusing on your tribe, it's it's imperative to do that. You have to have a good tribe with you in order to get things done. Wow. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, today, what I learned was, um, you know, Matt did something for free to earn two hundred thousand dollars, right? And I'm not, I'm not. If he earned fifty thousand dollars, I'll still be excited. If he earned ten thousand dollars, I'll still be excited because he came up with a formula and he all and he thought about the future. He was he didn't think now, hey. You want to hire me? You want to hire me? You want to hire me? Look, I'm new to this. I'm going to prove myself. I need you really to <laughs> jump on my resume anyway. And he, that was the first move. And then he went to Waltham. I'm um, sorry. He went to Weymouth and said, you know what? I'm going to do some videos for you. Just introduce me to your friends. So that's building relationships, right? So now everyone's seen his work and he lands the biggest contract in his life, Right? Then he said, you know what? I'm going to buy a home. I'm going to buy a distress home. Buys a distress home, put it on his, his wife's name only, so now they could buy another home. If a, a deal come on the market, they could buy it right away, put 3% down, boom, easy. Move to that home, rent the other home out, pull some equity out, sell the home. Whatever they want, they are in control, right? Because they made the right moves. That home was for 405 Four or five, right? Now, if they was both on the loan, that home would be four or five, Matt, four or five, his wife. To me, that sounds like eight, ten. Makes no sense to me. So they put it on the one person so they could leverage, leverage this, op, this, this decision to level up. All right, so it's a lot of gems. And then we talked about LLCs, the power of LLCs. 
right? You are in control when you own an LLC. It's easier to buy a commercial building than a residential. They ask for less stuff, right? So don't let these gem drops go over your head. I hope you watch this, um, this episode at least seven times. And pass it to your friend because you have to share this information with people you love. So make sure you share, make sure you subscribe so you can see more gem drops. And don't forget, if you're looking to sell, if you're looking to buy, if you're looking to rent, Thumbprint Realty is your only choice, your best choice. Thumbprint Realty, real estate done right. I'm your host, Alex E. Edwards, and I would love to keep speaking with you, but I got shit to do. See ya. God told me to meet him at a runway ever since I've been taking off.